there, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the Tri Tech Tech Pack with me, Trionus. How is everyone doing today? I hope everyone is well and looking forward to the Christmas holidays. Or if you, even if you don't celebrate Christmas, just enjoy the holidays as it is. <laughs> uh, so before we start, um. I reached 200 subs recently, so thank you very much for everyone who is subscribed to me. Uh, I know it's not a great big celebration because, quite frankly, I've been out of the game for a while, and even though I've got all these subs, it's still kind of like starting again. But regardless, thank you very much to everyone who's subbed and for your support. Right. Anyway, let's get on with today's episode. It'll just be a quick one. I'm afraid it's going to be a bit of a catch-up episode because a couple of things happened since I recorded the restart episode, which I know quite a few of you probably didn't even see anyway. Um, but I had to restart the restart uh, because I had to do some updates to the TriTech pack and uh, I've when I updated, I kind of forgot to uh, save my world, so that means this is in the third world of the Tritech series already. <laughs> uh, basically, so this is the area that I am currently in. If we have a look on the map, spawn was just here, and basically I just plonked myself down. Oh, excuse me, in a nearest area, good area that I could find. And uh, I had a look. The area that I've already explored around this is when I got uh, the bat form for Morph. And I could fly around and do pretty much what I wanted then. So, yeah, kind of fun and games. Uh, we have got some neighbours, some other violent neighbours. Uh, you can see that on the map that, that I just showed you. But those guys there, that is a fairly large bandit camp which we'll just have a little bit of a fly over and we'll have a quick oh come on there we go have a quick look for you uh like i said these guys are bandits i was hoping it was going to be a bazaar where they would trade with me and do all sorts but unfortunately they are and they, this guy's already tracking me <laughs> uh they're not very helpful but this should be some Decent loot in there if I can take it over. Not to mention, I think this would be a perfect space for taking all these buildings down and maybe building something here, especially considering it's already got a pre built defense wall, so I wouldn't have any problems with the uh, desert mobs. Uh, over there is another hostile keep uh I'm not too sure what the, i think it's the desert natives in this one i think it is uh if i remember rightly yeah the de desert native soldiers and whatnot i'm surprised the archers aren't shooting at me but they obviously haven't detected me quite yet oh there we go <laughs> as i said it uh so yeah that'd be a good place to try and take over as well there's also another desert castle fortification there as well so i've got a few neighbors to put up with but they keep to themselves at the moment they only come after me if i go near them right. let's just head back over to my little area as you can see i have got myself fairly well situated in the area uh been doing a lot more messing around with the agricraft crops if i just fly down oh, I might as well just drop down that's easier and morph back in so as you can see I've got some magical crops growing uh, hemp for immersive engineering I've got some pumpkins these are beans uh, sugar canes uh, melons normal crops uh, carrots and potatoes this area here is my research my farming research area because uh, obviously to get the beans you need to crossbreed uh, plants together and I've just managed to get some sweet potatoes as well uh, I've also got in here which I'm still going to have to uh, 
research as well. Uh, some dandelions, scallions. I don't know what scallions are, quite honest. Uh, poppies and some coffee, which will always be nice to have. Uh, so yeah, I've still got them to research, but at the moment what I'm doing is getting all the crops up before I plant them in a big field as a, to get them all to the AgriCraft 10, 10, 10. Because as you can see, these are growth 5, gain 5, strength 5. So as soon as I get these up to 10, 10, 10, I'll find a spot for them and plant them. So every single plant that you can see here from the Minico magical crops to the sugar canes right down here to the uh, potatoes, they are all 10, 10, 10. Choose so I get a lot of items from them. So and I've been kind of enjoying doing it. It's the first time I've really done a proper farming mod. I've dabbled here and there, but never really got into it too much. Uh, and this has been fairly uh, decent to me. Uh, this is my journal that I made, and I can show you basically so the beans and seeds make the coffee the pumpkin and potato seeds make beans themselves uh the carrots do a lot of stuff sugar canes scallion seeds i've still got to do the sweet potatoes and carrots but like i say i'm going to get everything up to 10 10 10 before i get up to that point uh so yeah i've done quite a lot of research already and still quite a lot to do so i've got sugar canes and the poppy seeds to do and the poppies and the dandelions to find out what they produce it's just knowing whether or not what uh land they need to be on um excuse me for one second i'm just gonna have a little bit of a cough <sighs> sorry about that my throat's feeling a little bit scratchy at the moment uh right um so yeah, that's my little bit of a tree farm as well. Uh, you may also notice my tools. I have been dabbling back into calculator, which I've got weakened diamond tools now, which is pretty decent. I've been using them quite a bit. Uh, I need to find out if I can actually repair these guys. It would be nice if I can because they're fairly expensive. Uh, but inside the house, uh, Basically, my local storage and furnace areas. I'm not going to go through all the chests, but basically, I've got wood and stone in one chest. I've got ores in another chest. Uh, this one has all my valuable ones in it, including 21 diamonds, which I found, which was nice. Uh, but yeah, I haven't really got a right lot of stuff, just enough to get me by until I get into uh, X Nihilus again. Because uh, I haven't actually done that quite yet. Uh, this is my calculator area at the moment. This is, I don't know if you remember me mentioning this. The hand crank generator. Uh, which is similar to the AE2 uh, grindstone thing. Uh, basically you just keep turning this handle and you'll get power. And you just transfer into that. But to get this fully charged. I actually put it over here next to the basic capacitor bank that I've got and it char excuse me, uh, charged it almost straight away but this was fairly good. Uh, I have got a couple of the calculators, I think they're over in this chest, yeah I've got the normal calculator and the scientific calculator which is what you need to get uh, these guys up. I should really put these in this chest so I know where they are. If anyone knows what this thing is, the Temple Caller from Hardcore Endo Expansion, I want my knowing. Uh, so this is some of the loot that I found out and about. I uh, haven't found an artifice uh, tower yet, but uh, I did come across a, a zombie spawner in my travels, which I do have marked on my uh, waypoint. I also found a couple of villagers. Uh, so I did find some decent loot and things from them. Uh, but yeah, this is kind of my automated system for ore processing. Uh, raw ores go in there, goes into the slagmo, goes into that chest, goes into the smelter, and comes out the other end as the resources. Uh, Power-wise, I've got a sterling generator, which produces 20 RF per tick goes directly into the basic capacitor which powers them and the hissing and whatnot you can hear are these two machines 
again, these were from Villagers. Uh, these are called hobbler steam engines. You just add water to them and coal. They produce steam and they produce 16 RF per tick uh, in there. But you've got to keep an eye on it because if I remember rightly, if they get a little bit too hot without any sort of release for their power, then they will explode. So, <laughs> yeah, I'm keeping a close eye on them. Uh, you can turn them on and off with a redstone signal. I can leave that and you can just turn them off as such. So, no problems there. Uh, just behind me, I have the coke oven because I'm going to try and get the windmills up to replace these guys as soon as. Uh, but what I want to do though for the windmills, now last time uh, I made... Uh, uh, these guys, the normal windmill, the basic one, very easy to make. But to be quite honest, I'd just like to jump directly to the improved windmill, which means I need steel. Uh, and to get steel, I need a blast furnace. Uh, let's just uh, type that in. Blast furnace. Now, there's two different types. There's the immersive engineering one or the railcraft one. Uh, I'm going to be using the immersive engineering because that's the easiest one to use. Uh, but what I need is blaze powder and nether brick. Now, the blaze powder is easy enough in this pack. Uh, let me just jump inside and sleep the night away because that's kind of a dangerous thing to be doing stood outside. <laughs> Uh, especially with these primitive mobs that are around here. Uh, but like I was saying, the blast furnace requires blaze powder, which is easy enough because this mod pack does have what's called the peaceful plus recipes. Uh, so that means you can actually craft your gold, uh, your blaze rod by using three gold, and then you get a gold rod, which then you use to cook up, and it makes a blaze rod, which then obviously gets turned into blaze powder. So that's not a problem, uh, it's just the nether brick which requires either nether rack or nether brick itself to actually get. Uh, so that means going into the nether. Um, oh yes, uh, I have set up a cobble generator and the ex nihilus seal whatever uh, crucible here to get the lava sorted and also I've got a nice supply of cobblestone. Uh, and also someone I forgot, I have got my slime, treasure slime pet back as well. Uh, I can't remember what Mountain Dew said to name it. I can't quite remember. I haven't coloured him either, so I can pick a colour and choose any suggestions for names. If, if Mountain Dew wants to suggest that name, I'm quite happy to reuse that one. I just can't remember what it is. And... Uh, I could go back into my comment section and I'll look, but I'm too lazy so you can tell me again. <laughs> uh, but any other name suggestions or the colour you'd like to try and see this guy, just put them in the suggestion. I think I can use almost any colour. You know, so, yeah. Uh, right, anyway, uh, back to the uh, nether situation. I have set up a nether portal just over this hill here, just there, ready and wearing to go. Um, but before I go into the nether, I kind of want to ask you guys and girls, um, what do you think to me adding in Tinker's Construct? I avoided it primarily because there's quite a few tools in this. You've got all these Calculated tools. Um, yep, you've got normal vanilla tools. You've got um, artifacts tools, biomes or plenty ones, uh, botania, uh, draconic evolution. Quite a lot of different sorts of tools, including magical crops as well. Uh, even some thermal foundation stuff there and redstone arsenal so and i thought tinker's construct was kind of overused but getting to the point of using these uh you're basically stuck using vanilla tools so that means 
breaking a lot of stone tools to get there so and it kind of gets a little bit frustrating or it does to me anyway uh, um, but once you have got up to these then most of these are unbreaking and whatnot because they've got power as well as being unbreaking because uh, there you go, the Zifico pickaxe. Is it worth just waiting until you get that, or would you prefer a tool that you could repair on the fly uh, using stone, paper, whatever, just to help you get going? I'm kind of on the fence about it. So if you want it in, please put down whether or not you want it in or not. Uh, but if I do add Tinker's Construct, and I don't think it'll affect the world generation too much, apart from maybe the uh, villagers. But even so, I haven't really explored a big part of this world anyway. There's still quite a lot of chunks to go. Uh, and I don't think it'll add too much ore generation into it either. The only ore generation I can think of is in the nether for cobalt and andesite. Uh, so that's why I'm putting off going into the nether because as soon as I go in there the chunks are loaded and granted I could go further out again like I said about the overworld but you know if I could do it, do it from the start I would do. Uh, so yeah that's why I've been holding off going into the nether. So uh, yeah if you've got any names for the slime uh, please do let me know. Uh, if you've got any thoughts about Tinker's Construct whether or not you'd like to see that add it like that added into the pack when I can talk let me know as well just put it in the comment section or if you've got any other hints tips or suggestions feel free to put them in as well if you've got a suggestion for a mod and you want me to check it out and I'll see what about maybe putting it in if I like it otherwise thank you very much for joining me and I will see you next time bye